All right, hon, so just, you know, look at the camera. Okay, did you push the button? Yeah, I okay. pushed the button. Hi, my name is Kristen and... Well, you have to wait until I sit down next to you. Oh. Okay? Okay. You're doing great. Thanks. <laughs> Admiring your family's matching hats. My name is Kristen, and I'm baby crazy. Yes. Good morning. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I'm not pushing one out. I'm not pushing one out either. No, gross. I definitely don't feel 100% ready for this. Nicole, no one feels ready to be a parent. Let's back up a second and tell you where we're coming from. Kristen was living in New Jersey on a dairy farm. And Nicole was living in Mexico on a goat farm. Then one day, we were both visiting our old stomping ground. And our paths finally crossed, even though we had lived within a mile of each other in New York City for 12 years. We knew it was love. We moved to Oakland, which is full of queer folks and artists and people from all walks of life. Pretty soon, we started to think about kids. One kid. We weighed our options. And thought about doing it the old-fashioned way. We thought about private adoption. And international adoption. And then we started talking about how there are almost half a million youth in foster care nationwide, and nearly a quarter of them are waiting for adoption. And so we decided we wanted to adopt from foster care. The thing is, there's a lot of mixed information out there. Entering the child welfare system can feel a little bit like walking into the world's biggest DMV. You know, the lines are crazy, and then when your numbers finally call... It turns out the clerk is leaving for their lunch break. And you filled out all the wrong forms anyway. Exactly. The goal of the system is to send kids back home. This is considered the best case scenario, and they call it reunification. But sometimes this isn't possible, and a certain number of kids go to foster and adoptive homes. We know that choosing this path requires patience, and we know we might even get our hearts broken. But here we go. Will you pull this to the... It won't go any further. There's a long checklist of things we have to do before we move on to the home study. The home study is basically when the social worker comes over to check out our house and make sure we're suitable for adopting a child. We have so much to do. Baby proofing, well no, cleaning, no, baby proof. I don't even know what to do first. We're open to adopting a kid up to the age of four. When we figure out the age, we'll come back and get more things. It's supposed to go here, but... I don't understand how parents do this. There we go. Rocky, test it out. <laughs> Honey, when was the last time you watered the plant? It's like it was here all along. So this is it. This is our apartment. Um, so we're looking for things that might be unsafe for a baby. Or a three or a four year old. How, how do you even open it? I think you just press that button and you just Oh, bad news. Okay, so basically we need to move the knives. Yeah. Can we go in the living room now? We haven't been able to figure out how to childproof hey. this yet. Uh, yeah, that's vodka. Is that a problem? Mm, yeah. yeah. And be careful, I just said, maybe we can move it somewhere, maybe somewhere. We can't move this though, it's tied to the wall. Like there's, we can't do anything about it. You wanna... Oh, the window! We don't have a window. Uh-oh. <laughs> so is that a problem? I'm going to have to cover that because he could crawl out and fall. 
these pull out. Oh, oh, oh my god, I never even thought about that. That's so bad. Hi, that can be very dangerous. What about the candles? <sighs> that, that candles can be dangerous. I but forgot about see, candles. You can if, fire if, on. If they're lighted and you can touch and you touch them and then it's on fire, you could you could die. I mean, I don't know. You guys are being a little tougher than I thought. So how do you all think that we did? 10 is like, perfect 10, you're ready to have a baby. We got candle problems, we got knife problems, a lot of, a lot of sharp edges. Let's do a nine. Oh, that's a very nine? generous of you. Oh, oh thanks. Nine? A 10. Oh. Nine. nine and an eight, kind of. And a nine and an eight, okay. okay. It's getting lower, I think we should quit while we're ahead. It's really old, it's from the 1700s. Somebody said the hundreds were not Whoa. even real. The, the 1700s are very real. Cool. The home study is right around the corner. I know. What do you think she's going to ask? I mean, I think she's going to ask a lot of invasive and uncomfortable questions. Mm. I think she's going to ask, you know, who drinks the most? Yeah. Drugs. Who does drugs? Mm -hmm. She's gonna <laughs> ask uh, who watches porn. Mm -hmm. She will definitely ask that. I googled it. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's a home study thing. They ask about porn. She's gonna be judging us even though she says that she's not. She's definitely gonna be judging us. I definitely think she's also gonna ask like who the dad is in the relationship. I think that's kind of obvious. <laughs> <laughs> what is your worst fear? You know, I feel like nobody knows if they can handle, you know, raising a child with PTSD and the odds are we will have a child with PTSD. I have never experienced that so who am I to help some kid through it? And what if they never bond with us? What if we fail at that? And what if they tear us apart? Like just what if? What if it gets that bad? I don't have those fears. Really? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't know, it's just not, it's not my fear. My biggest fear actually is like my family's health history of having so much cancer in my family of like dying and like leaving before you and our child and like <laughs> leaving you and our child. <laughs> That's my biggest fear. <laughs> scary but we'll be fine We're, we got this we got this yeah yeah